why you're here tonight, but I've got to say that 15 months after that first announcement, times have gotten even tougher. Well, I've been traveling through Indiana this week, and the stories I hear are the kinds of stories that I hear all across America. The, the guy I met in Marion who had had to pack up the equipment that he had worked on for 20 years, that his dad before him had worked on for 30 years mm. because the job was being shipped overseas. Well. And he had lost not just a job, but he had lost his health care. He had lost his pension. And most importantly, he had lost a sense of who he was. Yeah. He had lost a sense of dignity, a sense of self-respect. He felt betrayed because he had done everything that he was supposed to do. He had been striving for the American dream, and he felt as if it was snatched away from him. The same way as the Fisher family that I met just outside Indianapolis, and talking to Mike Fisher, who's in his 50s, and suddenly his Amtrak job is moving. And he hasn't vested his pension yet, so he looks like he might lose his pension. And he doesn't want to move his wife. And meanwhile, he's got a grown son who's got a pregnant wife. Or, or a wife that just had a baby and she needs some surgery, but that son doesn't have health care on the job. And so the wife just has to put it off. Just like the gentleman I met down in North Carolina, who has three children with cystic fibrosis. And so lost his home because of backbreaking health care expenses and still doesn't have health insurance for his family. Just like the guy I met in Pennsylvania who can't fill up his gas tank yeah. to go on a job search after he lost his job and doesn't know what he's going to do. Just like the mother who gave me this wristband to remember her 20th.